Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. My name is Victor Paredes Colonia. I'm part of our IT Asset Management Business Unit, and I'm very excited to once again bring you another one of our ServiceNow Live events, this time focused around setting up your first automated HAM workflow. If you like these events and you want to learn more or join these types of events for other, other products in our platform, please don't hesitate to uh, scan the QR code there and start scheduling and registering for those events. We'll also put a link in the chat. Uh, you'll have access to not only our events, but other events uh, that we put on uh, through the ServiceNow community. A few announcements before we get started on our session. Uh, first and foremost, some of the information we provide here is confidential, so please bear that in mind. And in addition to that, some of the information that we're gonna be sharing and showcasing, or some of the answers we'll be giving uh, during the Q&A session might be forward-looking in nature. So also bear that in mind as things are subject to change. All right, a big welcome to all of you. Really happy to have you here. This is our commitment to you to help all our customers deploy, adopt, and achieve value faster with their ServiceNow implementations. Uh, more specifically, in this case, for hardware asset management, what we wanna focus on is setting up your first automated workflow. And to do that, I brought on folks from my team in the BU. And if you don't know myself by now or Michael, uh, we're your host for these events. Uh, we're happy to be here. We love putting these things on for you. We wanna get your feedback in the chat as well as um, the survey at the end of the session today. So with, with us joining today is Michael Smith and Lalit Gupta, both product managers from our hardware asset management um, teams. So we're very happy to have you both here. And Lalit, I know it's late on your side, so please uh, bear with us. We have a lot of content here, but we know that you're gonna get as much out of it as our, as our customers here today. So thanks for making the time. All right. This is where, what we're gonna to cover today, um, three, three areas. The first and foremost is the HAM life cycle and just a walk, walk through of the overall overview uh, of our workflows. We had a session prior to this where we did a little bit of deeper dives into those. We talked a lot about normalization and how that's the fundamental layer of what you need before you can start executing prescriptive workflows. So if you haven't already seen that, I highly recommend that you do. That sets us off to then look at some examples. Uh, I wanna look at asset refresh and disposal. So Michael's gonna walk us through that, maybe look at a persona, what it looks like in the day in the life of a hardware asset manager. And then I'll work with Lilith and we'll talk about disposal with mobile scanning. So to all of you out there, what I'm gonna ask you all to do is to please stay focused on the topics of the day. We're gonna answer your questions at the end of the session. But, but please flee, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A form because we're gonna to get to those at the end. If you have comments to share, use the chat. Uh, and if you know something that uh, you wanna share with the group, also use the chat, so contribute what you know. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about the life cycle and a kind of a workflow overview. And Lilith, why don't you bring us up to speed with, um, with what we talked about last session and maybe start us off with an overview on prescriptive workflows and how that maps to the life cycle in general. Yeah, Victor. So when it comes to hardware asset management, hardware asset management starts from a request and ends till the retire. So there are many processes which comes from the request till the asset is re retired or disposed or leave an organization. So as in hardware asset management, we provide a prospective workflow for each and every process or the stage when the asset move from one stage to other state or when it is going from one process to other process, which is the life of an asset manager or a user and automate all the tasks. So for example, when it comes to the request, I want to know, I want to have a workflow which can ease my life of uh, searching an asset and placing an order. For that, we have a workflow where you can go to the service catalog and then you can type what kind of a hardware asset you want to order. And then you can fill the quantity. And then once you submit, the request is created. When it comes to fulfill, the main purpose of any stockroom manager or the procurement manager is when I'm fulfilling the request, I need to make sure that I you, best utilize the current resources I have, the asset, when I say. So it will give you the complete uh, 
our sourcing workflow will give you what how, can you consume the asset locally if they are available if they are not available can i transfer it from the other stock room or if it is not available what is the best option for me to place an order so we have a workflow for fulfillment when it comes to inventory so inventory which 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 can result in the cost and when it comes to inventory i want to know what is available in my inventory so we have a workflow we have a workflow how can i get rid of the the asset which are not in use or they are in the pending disposal or how can i do an audit what is there so i know what is there in my stock room what is new what is coming what is going so we have workflow for each of this which will go step by step and automate your complete process and when it comes to the deployment i want to know how can i deploy my asset automatically so we have a workflow there also monitoring i i want to know where how my assets are aging so we i have integrated with many application where you and even we have a normalization which will give you the life cycles you can know whether my asset is within the subscribe compliance or not when it comes to services you our it teams get a lot of request the request incidents change so we have a workflow which can automatically can swap track all of these request they can dispose the assets so on and finally when it comes to re retire it's not just esg it also comes as a dispo compliance risk so we we have a workflow there which and not even that even before the employee comes and join an organ organization we have a onboarding workflow where we integrate with the hr processes better together and so on it's full of workflows which automate not only the task but also the background processes manual processes which saves a lot of time cost money and errors no that's fantastic it, it's it's just wonderful to see that an asset when it's navigating through that life cycle has with it a workflow to help and assist so i, I like that you walked us through that Lilith. I, I appreciate that and and fundamental to that i mean at the core of it is having having the right data set right so having normalized data so that you can actually navigate and use the workflow so again that's a a precursor to what you want to have before you start leveraging the the, the workflows itself so mike how how easy is it to use some of these prescriptive workflows um, yeah so i mean it's it's pretty simple to use direct straight out of the box um they're all made to work um pretty much on day one follows our the best practices that we've lined up um if your organization has special requirements for any of the workflows um they're very easy if anyone is familiar with flow designer you can plug in your requirements whether they're uh, an additional layer of approval for example very easy to modify and configure if you need to but right out of the box, they're ready to go. One of the key things I do wanna point out with the workflows is they're really meant to manage the assets um, travel throughout different areas of the life cycle, but specifically when assets are not online, right? So we're talking about deploy and swap, right? These are heavily IT technician tasks where the assets on a, on a counter or in a lab being prepped and being staged or being shipped. There's no way to discover that. So this is when Lilith was referring to those updates. As those tasks are executed, the assets get updated. And, and we have workflows that cover your basic incident management, as well as uh, you know refresh, uh, disposal, loaners, uh, being proactive with your leases, managing your leases as they're coming up for uh, retirement, reserving or um, uh, assets for future use. Maybe you've got a dozen interns that are starting next month and you want to make sure you've got assets set aside. So on day one, they can get to work. You don't have to waste that day of uh, waiting for equipment. We have an RMA workflow and we also have an onboarding and offboarding workflow that really syncs nicely with our HR product. So as employees are coming on board, their equipment's ready on day one. And when they leave the organization, anything that's assigned to them, whether it's hardware, software, um, mobile devices, contracts, all those things. Um, there's independent tasks that would go into to update those. Um, so very, very easy to use. Day one of, of launching and turning on hand, they're there and ready to uh, be published to catalogs. That's awesome. And, and talk to us a little bit just about um, maybe some of the configuration that can take place uh, should you have uh, any needs specific to your organization. 
Yeah, and a lot of this stuff is you might have a you know security group that may have a role in one of your processes. Um, disposal workflows is one that we normally point out. We have a prepare for disposal task is, 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 is a basic task, but organizations may have um, asset management governance that has some data, data governance policies that require the, the HDs that are shredded or you know destroyed or degaussed, or if you do the DOD seven layer wipe. So there may be tasks that involve other groups. The idea is, is a lot of the stuff that needs to happen for an ITM platform to be successful is for it to be, you know, for people that need to do their tasks are actually updating the assets without knowing they're updating the assets, right? Um, and to be clear, all these workflows, everything that we're discussing today is part of our hardware asset management product. Some people call it Ham Pro. Um, this is our this is our uh, layered product that sits on top of the base asset management. So all this automation, this comes with hardware asset management. Yeah, thank, thanks for that clarification, Mike. Uh, so the last thing I'd like to ask on this slide here is um, the way that these workflows are designed, if I recall, they are based on request and task uh, assignments. Is, is that true? And, and if so, can you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a great one of our basic day one easiest to turn on at um, workflows is it, it, and, and we what, what you'll see a theme is we like to coordinate with other areas within service now. So you hear us bringing up SAM a lot or ITSM. So within the incident record now, if somebody submits a hardware request, say they have a black screen of death, right? They're, they have the ability now to plug in the, the lap, the replacement laptop into that ticket. So now when they resolve that ticket, they already know which laptop was broken because that was in the, the ticket. So they can actually take that asset and update it and update it to putting it in inventory, pending repair, pending disposal based upon the outcome. And then the new device will automatically be assigned to the end user that's on the incident. All the location data gets updated. Any software that's been pre -alloc or allocated to the device would be updated. So the software wouldn't be double counted and you have a clean updated asset record for both the broken asset and the new asset that's being redeployed. And all the technician had to do was their job. And basically look, your assets, your laptops broke, here's a new one, close the ticket, move on to the next one. Um, so that's that's definitely one of the, the most popular um, workflows that we've built in, in HandPro. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Lilith, why don't we talk a little bit about um, what's happening in the background? As assets are moving through the through the life cycle in these in these workflows, do assets and configuration items get updated along for the ride? Yes, Victor. So as as the workflow is progressing from one task to other task, there are a lot of activities happen in the background. So one is process automation, but what is happening in the background is asset is related to CI, and assets are also related with the other assets. So all of these data get automatically update when it moves from one stage to the other stage or one task to the other task. So from a user perspective or from the asset manager perspective or from the admin perspective, they don't have to worry about where all they need to update the asset records or data. And missing any updation will result in a lot of inaccuracy in the data. So what we have done while we are designing this workflows, we have made sure that whatever data or the records which are related to an asset, they also get updated when, when the asset move from one task to the other task. So in this case, there is a 100% data accuracy and no manual inter interaction is required from a user perspective. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. And, and if you wanted to check the status of those, those items, you can always go back and, and monitor and verify that things are, are updating accordingly, I, I would imagine. Yes. You can always go to the CMDB database. You can always go to the asset record and you can always go to the life cycle of an asset and you can check whether the related records are updated or not. Updated. That's, that's fantastic because that, that's really fundamental to anything asset management, right? It's having trustworthy data. So bringing in the data, getting that normalized, you know, making actions, taking actions on the data, and then being able to verify and look at it retrospectively and say, hey, this is actually updating along the way. Uh, that, that just builds a lot of tremendous confidence in your data set. Wonderful. All right, so this is a good primer for what, what's to come next, which is I wanna look at product with you guys and I wanna do some examples. Uh, so let's 
make the assumption we have good data. Uh, let's make the assumption that we, we have a couple of things that we need to do as an asset manager today uh, that we need to report back to our management. And first and foremost is an asset refresh. So Mike, why don't you walk us through that? Sure, absolutely. And refresh is a great example because it touches on really the entire life cycle of an asset from the request to the procurement, to the deployment, to the reclaim, the whole the whole um, end to end, um, cradle to grave of that asset will be discussed here. So for refresh, um, this is a common theme. We have a persona here, we have Jen. Um, she's a hardware asset manager and the challenge that she's facing is she manages hardware for a lot of different departments um, who have different requirements, different needs, different locations, different stock rooms. So to really have, um, and, and there's no formal process that, that they have today that they can do this with, which is a very common challenge where most of our customers that are upgrading to, to HAM are usually in this, this situation. Um, so they have a hard time identifying which assets need to be refreshed because if they don't have visibility of their entire asset estate, they could have seven, eight year old laptops out there and not even be aware of it, right? They don't know when they purchased it. They don't have these, these data points that Victor was just alluding to that really help paint the picture and give you that full intent transparency. Um, and, and a lot of times too, if you're doing this manually, you know, a lot of organizations will have a project manager that's just assigned to full-time refresh. And that's all they do. And they're making all these updates manually. And it's a very, very tedious process. And it does, it's not very fast. So the end user experience is not great. Um, it's a pain. And then they also struggle getting the old equipment back. And a lot of people don't consider how important that is because if you have a legacy device, you have software licenses that are entitled to that. Could be perpetual licenses that could be installed. You could have customer data, you know, personal data. You could have internal data. You could have all kinds of uh, data on that device that you want to get back and make sure it's safe and secure. So our solution and our specifically our, our, our hardware asset refresh workflow that comes with Ampro um, starts off with uh, leveraging all that great data that you have, right? So now you're able to flag an asset as eligible refresh. And this can be based on the useful life that you set on the model record. It could be 36 months, it could be 42 months. Whatever you decide as an organization is your threshold for technology. So for a laptop, it has a three-year warranty. So 36 months, you know you're covered, but maybe you wanna extend that and, and roll the dice for an extra six months save some money, you can go 42 months. However you want to do that, um, you can make your decisions with some supported data that comes as part of the content service that comes through normalization. So you're gonna get lifecycle dates that show you when an asset or when a model is going end of life or end of support. So this, you know, you shouldn't want any equipment out there that's now no longer being supported. Um, so now you've got the awareness and, and now you can turn that into a view to see all the assets that are eligible for refresh. Um, I've seen some organizations automate this. So when an asset comes up for refresh, it automatically kicks off a request and the refresh process happens and no one has to do anything. Um, but our end-to-end -end process is, is definitely supported through our perspective or perspective local workflow. So the entire process is streamlined. There's tasks that'll be executed by different people. So the person that orders the equipment may be a different person than the person that stages it. And that may be a whole other person that delivers it and deploys it. Um, and then you've got another team reclaiming the assets. So we've got all these tasks out there that you could um, have multiple people working on to get this whole process worked through. As the tasks get closed, the assets get updated, all the statuses, assignments, and all the data stays accurate, and no one's bothered with having to go in and swivel chair into another system or do an import or load up a spreadsheet or work through an integration to update the data. It's all done in real time as the tasks are closed. And then most importantly, there's going to be a reclaim task for every refresh to ensure that we're getting that old equipment, we're getting that data, we're getting those software licenses back to be redeployed um, and you're able to track it and, and all of that. So I'd like to jump in. I'm gonna steal the, the screen here. Yeah, and, go, for it. Uh, go ahead, did you have a question? Go for it, yeah, go for it. And kind of do this from you know the day in a life view of an asset manager. So as you're you know maturing your, your, your asset estate, and you're diving in and, and you're, you're bringing in all this, these great new features, you're going to be at a crossroads, right? Of, you're going to be able to be proactive and reactive at the same time when it comes to refresh. So as an asset manager, and confirm that you can see my screen. Oh, yeah, we're here. We see it. You see model management? Yes, sir. Great. 
Um, so as an asset manager, I can come to my model management dashboard and workspace here, and I can see that I have two hardware models that are going to be end of life for this year, okay? So I can start planning, I can start forecasting, I can dive in, I can click into this list and I can see these are the two models. I got an elite book and a server that's coming end of life that just went end of life. So I need to get on that, right? So it's anything that's coming up that's expiring this year. But then you're going to have stuff that's long been expired. As you're standing up ham, you've got equipment out there that you're starting to put the pieces together. You can see that you've got right now, looking at this demo data, I've got 34 different models that are already end of life. So, you know, great, I can be proactive, but I also have to be reactive too, and I can start organizing that. So I've pulled up um, uh, an example of that, and this is an Apple MacBook Pro. Um, this is a, uh, a model here that, um, that is, uh, oops, sorry, that you can see here went end of life a while ago. So I can pull up the hardware model lifecycle data, and I could see that this went um, end of sale in 2019. So Apple's no longer selling them anymore. So I need to go in and ensure we get this um, we get this approved. I can go and see, okay, I only have 38 of these that that are that are in use. Most of them are in this location. So I can start making some decisions and, and, and start working this process. So what I'm gonna do is, is as an example here, I'm gonna jump into, um, I'm actually gonna go to the request form for refresh and show you what it would look like. Now, keep in mind, I could do uh, a refresh for all of those 38, or I could just do a refresh specifically. So let's go with an end user request to refresh, um, and they want this specific, you know, so this will be the specific model here that would come in. This is what we're going to replace. And then I, and I could filter this and, oops, I need to do that. Hold on. There we go. I have to select it. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, and so now I can come in and I can select any filter I want. So if I wanted to do this by a location, by a department, by a building, by a cost center, um, I could literally come in and I could pick any any filter, any filters that I wanted to 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 do this. But I'm going to come in and just pull it from a list of of these. Um, and then we're also going to look for these. We just want we don't want to refresh anything that's in inventory. We can dispose of those. So I want to make sure I'm only looking at a list of, of assets that are that are deployed. Um, I can also put in an end user. However, I want to filter this. It's up to me. Um, but having all the data here allows me to do these these cool things here. So we're going to go ahead and run this filter. And now I'm going to get a list of all these MacBook Pros that are currently in use. And we're going to go ahead and grab this one here and slide it over. But like I said, if you wanted to, you could extend this and you could bring all 38 of those over and, 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 and have individual um, request items for each one. Um, but we want to keep this a little bit easier, a little bit simpler. So I come in here and I, and I create the request. So, you know, as I said earlier, when we do this, we have to talk to the, uh, the whole workflow. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we have to get the equipment to, to get refreshed. Um, and I have to put in someone's name. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab our friend Able Tutor here um, so we can get Able their new computer. And we can go right back into this request. And the first thing that needs to happen is it needs to be approved. We've added, a, you know, multiple approvers here. So this won't be a bottleneck. You can assign this to as many approvers as you need to, to manage this. And, you know, I just did a simple approval here, but you can come in and do it through, a, through an email or through a mobile app. Uh, once it's approved, you'll see a catalog task will now pop up to source the, the equipment. So when we open up this task, based on Able's location, um, when we fire off the source request, you're going to see um, that there's none in their local inventory. Now, there is one I can transfer or I can purchase it. Now, you can see here purchase is blacked out because why would I want to buy something when I can transfer it? So, you know, you always want to use the inventory that you have um, to do this. So these are available. I can select the stock room. You can see which stock room that, they, that they're in. So I'm going to grab them from the stock room and I'm going to put my stock room down that I want to ship to. And then there's an entire transfer process, which you guys are well aware of. I'm sure you guys have all used transfers. This is our base asset management functionality. What if it was a purchase order? You could work the purchase order through here, but for this case, it's a transfer order and you could follow the process. Not only can we follow the process as a, as a fulfiller, but the end user now can look at their mobile app and they can see where this is at. 
So once this transfer order is done, it will open up the next session. And I'm just gonna, just to keep the demo moving along so it doesn't take all day, I'm just gonna jump over to what the requested item looks like on the other side. So now we have what's called a hardware asset refresh task. And you can see this stage, we've just received it. We, we've received that equipment. Um, the transfer order was completed um, and it was shipped and we have it. So now we have to plan, schedule, deploy, reclaim and complete this task. And so there's all these different tasks that happen at the different, different stages of, of the request, right? So the first task is obviously going to be prepare the asset, right? So we have to go to the stock room pick up the physical asset that we're going to be deploying. We have to schedule the deployment date, the location. Um, if we reclaim it at the same time, or if we've already reclaimed it, we could update it here. Um, and as we work through these tasks, they, they get updated. Um, and then once we've closed out each one of these tasks, and like I said, you could see here um, the, the standard workflow of that, oops, I went too far, um, was, was to basically deploy it, reclaim it, and then and then you're done. And as you're doing this, as all these tasks get executed, the assets get updated. So you can see the replacement asset would be reassigned to the, the person, you put the person's name in here. So the individual that's working these tasks has complete autonomy to, to do these, but they don't have to go in and update all the assets. All they have to do is do the work and close the task. So that is the, uh, the asset um refresh workflow um the speed view of it um but this is definitely one of our more popular um workflows and uh definitely one of the ones that def definitely has a lot of interest for organizations because a lot of a lot of organizations struggle with all these things and we've tucked it into one nice and easy workflow fantastic mike Thanks for sharing that. I, I really like to see as you were navigating that that you can see all the different steps in the uh, in the process of where you're at, and you can backtrack, double check uh, your work, and also just see what's the next step to come. In. Yeah, so and, and as like I said, as an asset manager, I may not be aware of these tasks, but when I come in and I and I come to my overview, right, I can see all my tasks here. That asset task is mixed in here with contract tasks. Um, lease tasks, collection tasks, all my asset tasks are in one. So as different people are involved in the process, the tasks are properly routed and, and, and they're able to work them and track them. So I will go ahead and stop sharing. And now that we've reclaimed, uh, oh, I do wanna share this too, yes, sorry. Um, this is part of uh, our Better Together with um, our uh, APM or Application Portfolio Management. So if we're talking about like infrastructure devices and stuff like that, when we look at a business service, because we have all this normalized content data, we can actually look at all of our assets in one easy to view pane and they're actually color coded. So you can see if it's red, you know, that's a high risk. If it's green, there's no risk. And you can look at your business service that you manage and see what hardware you needed to start getting refreshed. And you can kick off this process that I just showed you for your infrastructure stuff as well. Um, and that way you can ensure that your services are supported by up-to-date um, hardware standards and, and not legacy equipment. So this, this stuff gives you a lot of, and, and that's the beauty of it with, with HamPro. You've got all this automation that's going to keep this asset data fresh. So you could start doing and leveraging stuff like this. You're getting out of the data update business, the data analysis business, and you're really back in the asset management business. No, I, I can see how this is, is this piece here would be really helpful for forecasting and proper planning, right? So that you can do things uh, proactively as opposed to reactively, which a lot of times in the practice of ham, we operate reactively. So luckily these, these are tools to help you be proactive in your day to day. Yep. And one thing I do want to mention too is 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 as we're re you know refreshing hardware, part of the asset update is also updating any software, any contracts, all that information gets updated as well as as new devices are spun up and and deployed. Nice, that's a good call out. So it's not just the hardware that's also getting updated, but the software, the contracts, everything associated to to that device. Yeah. Hey, Lilith, let's now navigate to disposal of assets and, and maybe you can also touch a little bit on mobile scanning. Yeah. So as refresh is important, disposal is also very important. So we have been using an asset for a timing now in our organization, but if we don't dispose it, there are many harm. One is 
we'll be worried about the data because as it has been used for a few years or a couple of years in an organization. And the second thing, if we don't dispose it peacefully, our inventory will pile up and we'll not be able to procure or store new asset. And that's where disposal become a critical for an organization from the compliance, from a data, from the governance, and from an inventory process. So today I'm going to share one persona, Casey. Casey is a hardware asset management for manager from a healthcare industry. But though we are speaking about the healthcare, but disposal applies in each and every industry, irrespective of what industry you are, whether you are in IT, telecom, because you need to dispose an asset. And when it comes to the healthcare industry, the asset disposal become much more critical for him because HIPAA compliance is one thing, data is the another thing, and the governance is the third thing. And the other major issue he faces is like, because of emerging technologies, there are a lot of assets are coming. So the disposal rate is also high with that. And, to, and the other thing, the problem he faces is when he moves an asset from one stage to other stage in the process, there are man, there are manual many manual process he need to update. And if he miss any of this, there will be inaccuracy of the data. To solve or ease the life of a hardware asset manager like Casey, we came up with a workflow. We work with those kind of people, and they help us to understand the process so we can come up with the workflow. And the workflow, not only the disposal, we have many other workflow that we discussed just before. And all these assets, when they go through the workflow, they will come to the inventory and the, the one which are ready for the dispose, they will be marked as a pending disposal. And asset manager, whenever he look into the inventory, he will have the visibility, which all assets are ready for disposal which are not so wet when we say the pending disposal that means he cannot put them in use and he need to peace, peacefully dispose them and for that we have built a workflow which is uh, low code end-to-end -end workflow using a flow designer which take take you through one step ahead following task by task and update all of this configuration manual data automatically in the background and when this asset move from one state to uh, one task to another task, the state of the asset will also change like from the pending disposal to when it is ready to dis, uh, depart, it will change to retired and in transit. And once it has been received by the receiving person or it has been disposed, the state will change from the retired dis, uh, donate, uh, disposed. And in that case, the organization makes sure that the data has been wiped off or disposed. And we have also be a good citizen by following a ESG environmental, social, and governance rule. Let me take you through the demo of this particular feature. So when we go to the instance, we can open a, we have an, a disposal order. Under that, we have a create disposal order or disposal order so we can open a new disposal order as i as i was explaining like all of the assets which need to be disposed they goes to the one stock row so as in this case let assume to be the southern california and automatically the location will and it will get assigned to one manager here in our case is a casey so i'm selecting that and once uh, i submit the request the new disposal request is created and it will go through all of these tasks so this is the workflow is created the workflow request is created which will currently in the draft state and then it will go to the next uh, in the scheduling transit and so on let's open the request so so far we have just created a request based uh, based on the stock room and now when once the request is created the first task as we discussed that uh, the stockroom manager or the hardware asset manager, he knows an asset. Now he need to plan an asset, which asset he want to dispose. So we have a filter where by which you can select a asset. By default, we give a pending disposal, but that doesn't mean that you need to dispose only those. You can dispose the asset before also. So 
if I remove this and rerun the filters, it will show you the complete list of assets. And then you can change any of those parameters. Mike has already given you an overview about the filter, how, how it works in the similar way. Let's select one of an asset. And once I save that, I have, you can see that I have planned the asset and the workflow task is created that is verified asset. Now I want to let everybody know that uh, till this stage we have been doing on the platform. Once the assets are planned, you can from next step you can do from the mobile device or you can do from a platform. And in the mobile device, you need to have an agent app under agent agent app you can open an asset and then there will be two tasks you will find verify and departure under verify you can open and scan the assets you want to dispose so we will do it from the platform i will open this request and i will verify the assets and close this task So sometimes it is a little slow, so I need to refresh this screen again. And moment the assets are verified, the scheduled pickup is task is created. Under scheduled pickup task, we'll enter the detail how we are going to schedule, schedule the pickup for this. So I will select the vendor, give a vendor ID, and when the pickup, they should do the pickup. So I will start select today's date and the contact name who will be responsible for this pickup and once i close this task the next task of uh, will be created for the departure so so far we have scheduled the pickup we have verified the asset next task is to depart from our stock room So I, here also we have a second list where we can select or deselect any if we, we have selected plant 50 asset and we want to just depart 10. So we can just select those 10 and approve it. So moment I close the depart task, it will go the vendor confirmation. Under vendor confirmation task, we are just making sure that vendor is going to receive this disposed asset. So as a part of, uh, if we are doing the community social work, we are donating to some, this thing, then they will send up, they have received. So once we have disposed, then the disposal document. So once the organization to whom we have disposed it, they receive the asset, they will send the acknowledgement saying that they have received it and we'll upload, we'll say the certificate of dispose disposal as yes and we will up upload the disposal report so this is for the tracking purpose tomorrow if you want to make sure that from the compliance pers perspective whom you have donated whether they have received it as it has been disposed in the right order So once the acknowledgement is done, you can see that disposal task is complete. The workflow is complete and we can go to the asset state and we can check that state of the asset has been changed from the retired disposed. And can we go back to the slides? Sure, we definitely can. So this, this is the complete disposal process we have done from the platform. But once we have done the plant and you can do the remaining process from the mobile devices. So you can do, you don't have to take a laptop with you. You can go anywhere with your mobile device and you need to have an agent app. Once you go to the agent app, you can open an asset and then it will show you, show you the list of uh, like create asset or dispose asset various workflow we provide under that related to the assets and then you can open an 
asset disposal. Once you open an asset disposal, it will show you the two tab. One is verification and one is departure. So the first process is the verification where we have to verify the assets. So the planned asset get verified to make sure they, they are properly. So here you can see the list of the asset. And then once you start scanning the asset, you will be able to see this list. And once you have scanned, you can scan. You, it doesn't, you don't have to scan all of them in one shot. So you can scan in the batches also. But once you have scanned all of them, you can click on the submit button. Once you submit it, it goes, the data goes to the platform and then your departure tab will become activated. And once you go to the departure, you can depart those assets. Again, you have to scan it and close it. And once they will sync with the platform and once they are departed, you can upload the acknowledgement and the state of asset will change to retire and donate it, uh, disposed. That's great. I, again, I really like the fact that you can keep everything very central. You see the step by steps, so you can always backtrack, change something that is along the, the life cycle uh, workflow. So I think it's really important to, to also mention that as you were doing that, and you showed it at the very end, but just want to highlight it again, the state of the asset changed over time. Uh, so yes. each time you were doing something in that in that prescriptive workflow, from you know, you know, verifying it all the way through to the disposal piece, the asset record was changing along the way. Uh, and at the very end, you showed us what the end result was. So I, th I think that was great. Yeah, when I see it a lot in, of- When it Go is ahead. in the depart, depart state, you will see in transit and uh, dispose state. And when it is uh, in the verification state, you will still see that retire and pending donation state. So state is changing, that is where the, automatically the in the background the configuration and the asset data is getting updated so the data accuracy is there no action is required you have to go from one screen to the other screen or from one table to other table and that is what is the beauty of the workflow so workflow first thing it takes you to the step by step so making sure that you don't miss any step the second thing you just focus on the workflow and we'll do what is required in the background I like I like how you su su surmise that a little bit. I like that. That's great. Okay, so there are questions in the chat. Um, I know Mike's been answering some of those as well. I will resurface those for everybody's uh, reference. But if you have any questions, please use the Q and A form. We'll start getting to those momentarily here. Fantastic. Yeah. So I'll I'll take a look through some of these questions here. Thank you very much for um, popping these into the chat and keep them coming. So let's start with a question from, since we just spoke about mobile a little bit, um, do you have to use the mobile app to complete the disposal process? If not, do you complete it on the disposal order task? Yeah, that, yeah. that's exactly right. You don't, you know, you can, we offer the mobile app to allow for real time updates into the platform from anywhere you're at, whether you're on a, on a production floor or you're in a, you know, disposal cage, wherever you're at allows you to do that. If not, you can do it all through the, the tasks as well. Mobile support is only for for us to do anywhere, any place, any device. So in case you don't have a laptop and you want to do from the mobile, then you can do through mobile. Great. All right. Thank you, guys. We have a question here from Jill. Um, what is the user access needed to support workflows? So that is a loaded question, which is why I, I triggered it to, to go live. Um, access, role-based access is, is unique to every organization. So um, you'll want to think about that during your implementation project, who has the ability to request these, what assignment groups work, these different tasks. You could have an entire end-to-end -end workflow and have different groups only able to visible and edit the tasks that get assigned to them. Um, and then end users, um, it's up to you how you publish it. Um, you know, if it's something only a manager could request versus an end user, that's completely up to you. It's very flexible. It's however you want it to be configured. Out of the box, it's it's the Wild West. Anyone can request them, but we allow you to build the buffers that you need. All right. Thank you, Michael, for clarifying that. Um, Edgar wants to know if there are any pre-built reports. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, Lillette. Yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, dashboards. So now when you open a workspace, you will get to an overview page where it will show you the 
many reports we have. So irrespective whether you go to the hardware asset workspace, you go to the contract management workspace, procurement workspace, or you go to the asset workspace, all of these are summarize of complete activities required in that area. So when you go to the inventory, it will show you the important important action. It will show you the relative links. It will show you the reports. And in fact, it will also allow you to create the new request also. So we have out of the box, or you can say default reports, which can give you the alerts, analytics, and up-to-date required immediate actions. Okay, fantastic. And there's a whole bunch of uh, pre pre canned reports that come with ham um, and in the reporting functionality and service now it's so easy if there's something that you need it's pretty easy to make. Yes, indeed. We have a question here from Nathan. Can business line staff be allocated access to manage specific assets. Could assets be allocated to external customers? For context, I work for a financial institution and our treasury management team maintains inventory and issues hard tokens to customers to access secure platforms. These tokens have an expiration date and need to be replaced in a multi-year cycle. Is there an appropriate use case here? That's an amazing use case, absolutely. You would absolutely be able to do that. And we've had customers, you know, we're talking about the little key fobs with the display that changes every 90 days. They're a small, you know, small little thing, but um, if people can't access their their platform, then it's a challenge. So, by all means, it's a great use case for that. Thanks for that question, Nathan, and thanks for writing out so much specifics. All right, we have a question here: uh, Is Tokyo Enterprise Asset Management module module leverages the same ham workflow, or are they different and unique? So yeah, maybe we can talk about the difference between enterprise asset management and hardware asset management workflows. Yeah, so there's a lot of comparisons between the two. Um, so for those that aren't aware, uh, Tokyo um, release, um, well, actually a little earlier, two weeks ago, we launched a new product on the ITAM umbrella called enterprise asset management. Um, and the general muscle movements are the same on how you manage a hardware asset or an IT hardware asset versus how you would manage a, a enterprise asset. But hardware assets usually have some very hardware asset specific tasks to them. Stuff like, um, you know, you know, for example, we were just talking about, um, you know, wiping a device or stuff like that. You wouldn't do that necessarily with an AC unit or a vehicle, right? So there's a lot of similarities between the two but they're they're separated by um by the two products so anyone that's familiar with ham will see a lot of familiarity with yam and vice versa but they also have their own unique stuff as well we have tons of documentation around enterprise asset management that's available today and if it's something that you're interested in, i would highly recommend reach out to your account team um, and get on the list to have one of our eam solution consultants do a demo to show you what it's all about it's really cool yeah, I co-sign that. Fantastic. So I'm going to dip into the answered questions here. I like this one from Jill. Which out-of-the-box workflow would you start with, assuming asset records exist and discovery is enabled? What are some quick wins? So I know, Michael, you, you took a stab at this, but maybe we can speak about that for a wider audience. Yeah, so for me, the, the quickest wins are, you know, it's always scary as an asset manager when you let your assets go out in the world and you let other people manage them and, and you worry about them not updating them and and the quickest wins for me are the incident asset tasks. And those are built into the incident management process and the change management process. So as break fixes are occurred or, um, you know, as devices go through the service desk or through the data center for racking and stacking, you have an emergency change, you need to swap out a server. You know that the people that are, that are racking and stacking that server care more about that server running and replacing the old server and keeping business continuity going than they are about updating the asset record. And all that stuff just happens in the background. So that's instant quick wins that'll improve your incident management process and your change management process while improving the end user experience all at once. And, and selfishly as an asset manager, you're guaranteeing that those assets are now getting updated. Um, outside of that, the standard hardware asset re request, which is one of our first workflows that we came out, that flow can be applied today to any hardware assets you've created, um, published to your catalog. So if you've got a standard laptop that people can go request, a mobile device, um, anything, you can plug in that workflow and that, that, that'll do the sourcing, it'll do the approvals, it'll, it'll 
do everything that's required and update the asset as it moves from from you know vendor to receive to a warehouse to deploy the whole nine yards. So that's those are really our two big ones to, to use. They one. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Michael, for that. All right, keep the questions coming. We have a little bit more time. Um, in the meantime, I'll do one more question here from our archive. Uh, looks like Terry had a question here. Um, is the eligible for refresh determined by the model lifecycle, the warranty end date, or useful life, or a combination? End of sale assets could still be under warranty if purchased toward the end of the end of sale date. Michael, I know you took a step at this, um, but maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. So, um, yes, the answer to your question is yes. Um, but in more detail, um, I like the useful life because as an organization, you want to set a policy, not so much based on a specific model, but on a device type. So maybe servers, you have a general five-year useful life. Um, you'll find that some vendors won't publish their lifecycle dates and other vendors will. And you could have some vendors that use a three-year um, useful life as opposed to a four-year useful life. So having a, a standard policy across the board is always the best way to do it, in my opinion. Um, so you can use the content data that, that we provide with the normalization service to, to let you make those educated decisions. But as an organization, it's always best to set those policies at the device level. Awesome. A couple more quick questions here. Um, Claire wants to know, can we bulk update assets and assignments based off Microsoft Intune spoke data? Um, yeah, but that's, so our workflows, keep in mind um, for it to be in tune, we're looking at um, integrations and we're also requiring that device to be online. So you can't dispose something that's plugged into the wall. Um, so, I mean, yes, there's a lot of stuff that we can do with the automation, but our workflows are really meant to work with, uh, with that kind of um, integration as opposed to rely upon it. Okay, great. Question here on um, scanners. Um, can you use a handheld scanner instead of a mobile? Yes, you can. Yeah, any, any, um, so any Android based, um, and it needs to meet the requirements for our mobile app. You can find that in our ServiceNow documentation. Um, but as long as you can access the Google Play Store, download our, our app and fire it up. If the scanner has a display window on it, a lot of our customers have disabled the camera feature and they use the, the trigger scan. So Zebra is probably the most popular. It used to be Symbol, used to be Motorola, now they're all Zebra scanners. But those are the ones that have the little the handle and the trigger. You see the people walking around Target with them, for example. Those are very popular to be used and they you know, allow you to do more um, than, than you can with your phone. It's a little bit easier to scan a bunch of barcodes with uh, the, the infrared scanner as opposed to the camera. Fantastic. Thanks, Michael and Lit. You guys are rock stars for fielding all those questions. Um, there might be one or two more that trickle in if you want to answer them on typing. But in the meantime, I'm going to pass it back to Victor to wrap this up. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate the questions. Really appreciate the answers as well. Hopefully that was informative. <laughs> if you want more information on what we talked about today, uh, please be on the lookout for resources that we're also going to post on the community with, with, um, with this recording as well. So we have automating hardware asset management with workflows. This is something that uh, we talked a lot about today. We now just have it for you in content form so you can review it, read it, um, get exposed to it. We also have a, a story on how we're using hardware asset management internally. And then for those of you that wanna get a little bit more technical, um, you know, we defer you to the process guide so you can start getting more information on hardware asset management. If you haven't already taken trainings, uh, it's a good place to start with the hardware asset management fundamentals training. It covers a lot of your bases. It's a great place to start because it's going to let you hear about not just workflows, but everything prior to that. So you can get ready for um, successfully using those workflows. The hardware asset management simulator is a good one too, because before you start actually using your instance, you might want to get some hands-on experience with a simulator. So you can start testing out some of the features we talked about today. And then lastly, if you have hardware asset management from a previous release, and you want to learn a bit about what's happening in this current release, anytime we have a new release, we have Delta trainings, it just catches you up to speed on what's, what's new in the product. 
And the last thing I'll leave you with is the ITAM community. This is a landing page where we suggest all our customers start off at. Uh, in there, you'll find a landing page for a getting started guide, which will have a summary of all the different areas that you can um, get exposed to from trainings to helpful documentation and just how to really think about asset management in general. Uh, so this is a great place to start, great place to look at with your, with your implementation partners if you're working with any. And with that said, I'm going to say thank you to everybody, Lalit and Michael. It was a pleasure to have you guys here. To our audience, we love the questions. Please keep coming back. We'll speak with you all soon. Have a great week. Take care.